Jason Gilbo here at JGilbo11, taking a look at value plays for Daily Fantasy Cafe. Uh, overall, pretty straightforward slate tonight. We do have a couple of big games to look at uh, in terms of Vegas. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the Pelicans Warriors, they're sitting at 224, but a monster uh, blowout potential at minus 17. But you know what? I think we can take, you know, everything with a little bit of grain of salt these days, uh, given the fact that the Lakers blew out the Warriors at home the other night. Uh, the other one, big one here uh, that I'm going to be targeting heavily is the Wizards and Rockets, 216. Washington just a point and a half favorite. Um, and Chicago and Orlando could be an interesting one, just a six point spread there, um, sitting at 201. So, um, out of all the teams, I mean, really, uh, the Philly with the lowest total of the night, 92. Um, Pistons on the road, 93 as well. Those are probably the two most unfavorable. Um, totals that we see here so um not necessarily going to be staying away but definitely going to be limiting exposure uh looking at point guards tonight and you know in, in terms of new guys starting um you know none to really look at but we do have a couple of guys that, that need to be you know mentioned uh and kind of what's up with tim frazier you know obviously he was a lock the first couple nights of of the season we played him in all you know pretty much every format now i mean his minutes have been down uh over the last two games 15 and 25 no foul trouble has just not played well uh, which is a little bit disappointing. So uh, obviously we look and, and still know Drew Holiday. Uh, Langston Galloway played uh, a fair amount of minutes last time out, uh, 28-32 over the last two games. Um, so that could be a possible situation where Galloway might be the plug-and-play. Uh, but obviously I think there is still some risk with this rotation. But you look at Galloway, just 3K on DraftKings, um, around a similar price on FanDuel as well. So I mean, I, I don't see a problem throwing them in GPPs, but I don't think, you know, cash games, either of these backcourt guys, or can we be trusted with minutes, even though they are, um, you know, down pretty much to their, you know, bottom few guys there. They did just sign Archie Goodwin. Uh, curious to see how that one plays up. So, um, you know, definitely kind of keep an eye on that situation as the day goes on. Uh, Galloway's just 3700 on FanDuel as well. So um, he, he would be a viable punt option. Um couple other cheap guys, uh, Victor, sorry, not Victor Oladipo, uh, Alfred Payton, 6,100, um, coming off his worst game of the year, but this guy has been playing solid minutes, um, you know, over 30 in, in three of the last four games, 29 and, and 28 in the other two, uh, has been pretty solid this season, um, you know, averaging uh, 12, 6, and 3, um, you know, he's not particularly a good shooter, but this is a guy who is going to rack up the assists. Um, you know, and, and get, you know, maybe 10 to 15 points on, on a good night. Um, draws a matchup with Rajon Rondo. Not particularly scared of that there. Uh, Chicago's been mediocre against point guards so far this season. So I don't mind him. 5,800 on FanDuel is certainly reasonable. Uh, 6,100 on DK and one of the cheaper options. Uh, seeing 33 minutes per game this year. So uh, I think he's a viable option. Um, obviously, you know, you look at point guard and, and you see Curry, Westbrook, Paul, Wall, all those types of guys tonight who are, are certainly in play. So I think we're looking at kind of one pay up option uh, and, and also kind of a, a, a pay down. So uh, another one I like is George Hill. I mean, he's been playing really well, uh, coming off a great game against New York, playing big minutes. Um, every game has been over 30 outside of the game against San Antonio. But he's been a solid producer. Um, I mean, you look, he's got four games over 20 real points this season, just 6K on FanDuel, uh, 6,500 on, on um, DraftKings. He's also shooting guard eligible on DraftKings, so that's a bonus for him as well, so you don't have to use him at a point guard spot. Um, and he's been playing pretty well, so I, I do like him. I think he's an interesting play. Uh, usage rate has certainly, you know, been around what we expected. Great matchup there, so I think you should take a look at George Hill as well tonight, but obviously no... Um, you know, there should be any, a, a little bit of blowout concern, um, any team that kind of heads in place Philly right now, even though they have been somewhat competitive this year, um, but just a seven and a half spread. So I think you can kind of limit expectations on that. Uh, on the other side, Sergio Rodriguez has been playing really well, 5,300 on DraftKings, really tough matchup against Utah. Um, for me, I, I think I'm going to be staying away. I'd rather pay up just a little bit more for guys like Hill for Peyton, uh, and use them, um, you know, 5,200 on DraftKings. So I think I'd rather take a shot with 
basically a couple of those other guys there even take a shot with the backcourt um, just because it's a better matchup, better up-tempo game. Uh, Tyler Johnson's another one who, you know, even with Richardson returning, um, still playing minutes, and this guy's been producing, you know, pretty much in all, in all aspects of, of, you know, defensively, uh, gets a couple of assists, a couple of rebounds. He's averaging 15, four and two with a, uh, nearly a, uh, steal and a half per game. Um, you know, still relatively cheap. He's shooting guard eligible on DraftKings, So that's another plus as well. So, uh, another guy to kind of take a look at on tonight's slate. Looking at shooting guard tonight, um, the news is that Eric Gordon is going to move to the second unit. Corey Brewer is going to start, likely play against Wall, um, as expected. Uh, we'll get to Corey Brewer in a minute, but I don't think that really takes Gordon off the table. Um, you know, I, I still think he's going to be a viable option, and especially in that total. Um, and you might catch his ownership down a little bit. I, I don't think he's going to play really anything less than 27, 24, 25, 26 minutes. Um, I, I think he's going to be right around where he's been all season, uh, which has been around, you know, basically 30. So uh, I don't mind him. I mean, obviously, he's he's been a guy who, you know, runs hot and cold. Uh, he's definitely going to take his threes. So you get that bonus on DK. Uh, just 5,400 um, on DraftKings, so I don't, definitely don't mind him. Um, just 5,100 on FanDuel, so uh, don't let the news kind of scare you away from him if you need him to plug him in as kind of a secondary shooting guard option tonight. Outside of that, um, you, know, you look at Deion Waiters, he's been playing well. 4,600, uh, I mean, the minutes were down last game, 24. Uh, not really looking at him. I think I'm going to be off of him uh, for the most part. He's had a couple good games this year, but I think that time has run out. I'd rather look at Tyler Johnson. Um, Etuan Moore is another one. He's been a guy who's been seeing uh, nearly 30 minutes per game uh, this year. Um, he's a guy who can shoot the three ball pretty well. I definitely don't mind him. Um, in this type of matchup at 4,100 on DraftKings, uh, certainly kind of a, a viable play. I mean, just 4,400 on FanDuel, 103 total still with kind of the backcourt and, you know, shooting and small forward a little bit banged up. Um, each one more is a viable option uh, in that late game. Outside of that, not really looking at too many other guys. I mean, there are some guys at some mid-range prices. Um, you know, you could Clay Thompson, just 5,700 on FanDuel. Victor, Victor Oladipo, 5,600. Those guys we know that have upside, um, but haven't particularly played to the role um, like they did last year. So it's, it, things have shifted a little bit. So uh, I'm continuing to just kind of wait that out. Not really looking to use them. Uh, nothing more than just kind of a GPP play at this point. Just hoping that some usage shifts to them in, in the game. Um, especially given how high scoring there. So that would be the only case. Uh, small forward. Um, Solomon Hill. If you want to really dive down. Uh, 3,900 on FanDuel. 3,800 on DraftKings. Um, seen about 25 minutes per game. Uh, obviously Lance Stevenson out for quite some time. Time. Uh, no word so on yet on, on if Archie Goodwin is going to come in and play. So uh, definitely keep an eye on that New Orleans rotation. I think that's going to be a key for a lot of the value, especially with the way defensively uh, Golden State has played this year. Um, Corey Brewer, as we mentioned, he is the punt play at small forward tonight. Expect a minutes uptick be given that he's going to be guarding a wall. Um, this is a guy, I mean, he, particular upside. I mean, when he gets minutes, we saw it last year a couple times filling in. He would be an intriguing look. I, I don't mind him as a punt play because you look at small forward tonight. Yes, Durant is there. Um, Paul George is in a matchup where I don't mind him. You know, same thing with Jimmy Butler, Gordon Hayward, those guys. So, you know, there are some small forward options. You don't necessarily have to pay down. I like the mid-range. I like Justice Winslow. Um, I think I'm just kind of really looking at the Miami value plays or mid-range plays in that game. Uh, 99 team total. So uh, I'm certainly okay with firing away there. Otto Porter I'm off of uh, with Wallback. Not really looking to use him a ton. Obviously a decent matchup against Houston. Um but not really looking to to kind of fire away. I'd rather use Trevor Ariza at the same price on FanDuel. Um, you know, if you are going to pay up a little bit at small forward, I think Ariza still makes the better option. Uh, definitely more of a, a GPP play, though. I can't quite trust him in cash. Uh, 5,300 on DK, certainly not a bad look either. So um, outside of that, not really looking at, at Robert Covington, not really looking at Andre Roberson, uh, those types of players tonight. So I, I would really kind of stick with those guys. 
um, power forward, and you know if you want a guy who's just going to consistently get you a double double, it's Tobias Gibson, uh, 5600 on Fanduel, 5700 on DK. Uh, I'll be continuing to fire away guy who's going to play about 27 minutes per game uh, and just kind of average basically a point per minute um, in terms of fantasy production. So decent matchup against Orlando. They haven't been particularly good against the front court this year. Um, you know, a 104 total there. So certainly going to be looking at Gibson. It's kind of a mid-range cash game option. Uh, definitely a solid look. Uh, outside of that, though, uh, I mentioned Marvin Williams possibly being out. Uh, that would shape, uh, you know, Frank uh, Kaminsky into a bigger role. Um, you know, 4,300 on DraftKings. I wouldn't quite look to use him on FanDuel, I don't think. Um, he's a guy who could see about 24, 25 minutes if, if Williams is out. You know, a matchup against Indianapolis, um, you know, they have not been good uh, against power forwards. You know, Thaddeus Young in town basically had been firing away with any power forward against him uh, to this point. So, um, you know, as kind of a GPP play for value, I don't mind him. i still rather stick, you know, within Taj Gibson. Um, Markeith Morris is one of the cheaper ones I don't mind tonight as well. 5,800 on Fandle, 5,900 on DK uh, would be an intriguing option, so you can definitely take a look there as well. Um, Dante Cunningham, once again, I mean, would be a punt play. New Orleans is basically filled with the bottom of the barrel value tonight. Um, keep an eye on the rotation situation, see if we can get some minutes. I'll try and update in the comments section as well, um, and we can kind of keep an eye on that as the night goes on because that is going to be a game where we do want some exposure to, whether it's, you know, with the studs of Golden State or kind of just using, you know, the New Orleans value. So uh, on the centers tonight and, um, you know, looking at a couple of these guys, um, I, I wish Clint Compella was getting more minutes. Obviously, it's a solid matchup for him, um, averaging right around 23 minutes per game. He's a guy I don't mind tonight. Um, you know, the, the price tag on DraftKings is still a little bit, I wish it was a little bit lower. But this is a guy who is producing in the minutes that he's getting. Um, I mean, you know, foul trouble has always been an issue. Could have limited his time a little bit in his last game, uh, but obviously 21 minutes, 12 and 10 with a steal. Did have five turnovers, which hurts you on, on FanDuel, but not so much on DraftKings. Um, but I mean, this guy, when he's been above 20 you know, minutes, he's producing you know above 20 fantasy points for the most part. So um, I don't mind him tonight. Obviously, in that total, this is one of the ones I'm going to be targeting away with. Um, so you go ahead and you can give him a look as well. Uh, Steven Adams um, is another one. I mean, his usage has ticked up. 5,200 still on FanDuel, so still pretty cheap. 5,700 on DK. Um, Adams is a guy, I mean, I know Hassan Whiteside is down there, but, you know, this is still a, a, a defense that, you know, has lost Dwayne Wade. Um, you know, not a lot of front court presence outside of Whiteside, who's not necessarily a guy who stops fantasy points. I mean, production has been there for centers against the Heat this year. So uh, I definitely don't mind Adams. I mean, this is a guy who's going to be playing uh, roughly 30 minutes a game. Uh, and we've seen him, I mean, really outside of the game against the Clippers. Uh, we had, you know, some foul trouble uh, and couldn't really get anything going. He's been pretty solid. So I, I think a double-double, obviously the blocks and steals have been there this year for Adams. So you can certainly go ahead and give him a look. Uh, one of the safer, the cheap options. Joel Embiid, I mean, obviously this guy is still going to play on a 24-minute basis. Um, the fantasy points per minute have just been stellar. I mean, back-to-back 40 DK point games. Um, you know, 5,700 there. Tough matchup against Utah. Uh, that's one of the things. I mean, they have been a top 10 defense against, you know, centers for quite some time. 92 total. Uh, it would just be a GPP pick for me just because he has been so stellar, has looked really good. Um, kind of curious to see how that turns out as, you know, the season goes on here. So uh, outside of that, I mean, there are some mid-range DK centers. Um, you know, I definitely don't mind Vucevic still, you know, 6,300. Uh, there are some guys like Gobert, like Miles Turner, like DeAndre Jordan, all just kind of under that 7K mark if you want to make a, a center-heavy lineup. So all three are in decent spots tonight. I think that's kind of a, a an important way you could possibly go. Um but outside of that, I mean, that's going to pretty much wrap things up with tonight's slate. Seven games. Keep an eye on that New Orleans situation. I will keep things posted in the comment section on what I see. Um, also, head on over to DailyFantasyCafe.com. Check out our great tools and content.